Welcome to the program today. Mondo Gonzalez here in studio with an all-star cast, and we're going to be discussing the brand new film Ragnarok. But before we do, I want to remind everybody about the exciting March of 2023 that Prophecy Watchers is going to have. One of the things that we're doing, and we want to invite all of you to, to do, is to join us in Jerusalem. We are going to be there in, in the latter part of March, and you can go and find more information about that at visitisraeltoday.com. And it is going to be a great trip. If you have never been to Israel, March to me is the best time to be there. We're going to go to Jerusalem, the Sea of Galilee. We're going to see the coast. We're going to see the beaches. It's going to be extremely awesome. We're also going to be doing a trip to an extension trip into the land of Jordan. Uh, what's over there? Well, there's a lot of things. One of them is to go see Mount Nebo where Moses was buried in Deuteronomy 34. We're also going to go see Petra, which is a place that has some prophetic significance. And so just ask you to join us. It's going to be a great time uh, as I've been there. Again, safe. There's no medical requirements of any kind, which again is another opportunity to go uh, while we can. The other thing that we're doing in March is we're going to be having uh, what we're calling the uh, Orlando Prophecy Summit in Orlando, Florida. And you can find information about this Bible conference that we're going to have there um, at prophecywatchers.com. We're going to have over 15 speakers to join us, uh, to, again, to talk about current events, Bible topics, and again, to be looking for uh, the coming of our Lord. So that's a pretty exciting time. Join us in that. Well, right now, again, going back to our all-star cast, we have Gary Stearman, we have Josh Peck, and Tom Horn. Welcome, guys. Hey, good to be here. It's good to be here in my case, especially yeah. because I haven't been here for a while and I'm feeling much better, thank you. But this morning I am feeling much, much better because Tom Horn is here and I always learn something when Tom Horn comes to town. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking at a uh, DVD here, the title of which is Ragnarok. And uh, if you haven't heard that name, it's very strange, Tom. What's behind that name? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's really it's out of Norse mythology. And of course, we wouldn't have used it except for the fact that it's only a plagiarism of what is already told in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that is at the end of time, there is going to be a cosmic conflict, a war of the gods. Jehovah, Jesus, the armies of heaven even, pitted against these ancient evil entities that were known in antiquity as the gods. Ragnarok in Norse mythology, what does it mean? Yeah, it actually translates to fate of the gods. So we thought that was just a, a perfect title for exactly what this movie is about because it has to do with the tribulation, book of revelation, and really the fate of the gods. Now, we're going to be talking about the book of revelation <clears throat> uh, quite a bit today. And... It's a special part of the book of Revelation, but I should say, now that we're talking about the battle of the gods, that's the, one of the main themes of Revelation. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, Apollo is in Revelation. Yes. What's he doing there? Right. And interestingly, he's even tied to Revelation 8, which we'll be talking about today, the wormwood object that falls down out of the heaven. But then the very next uh, trumpet that sounds, I saw a star which is the, the Greek aster from which we make asteroid, fall from the heavens. But then it's personalized, and unto him mm -hmm. was given the key to the bottomless pit. So it's intriguing what we're talking about here in the bottomless pit. They have a king down there over them whose name is Abaddon or Apollyon, the king of the bottomless pit, yes. who rises up out. And then some of the offspring of these gods, these mm -hmm. insectoids come up out from out of the underworld to torture unsaved and unredeemed humanity. It's sci-fi, mm -hmm. or is it? No, mm -hmm. it's not, because fi means fiction. This, my Bible, is not fiction. It's going to happen. It's going to be worse, I think, than anybody can possibly imagine. Yeah, I mean, even Jesus said it's going to be the worst time humanity has ever seen. And if those days weren't shortened, then uh, the world wouldn't survive. So it's going, to be, it's going to be really bad. Now, where do we go from here? <clears throat> the uh, subtitle on this DVD that Tom has created, uh, Ragnarok, Humanity's Last Stand. What do you mean by that? Well, for me, this actually began, uh, Gary and Mondo, uh, many, many years ago. Uh, you guys know a little bit about this, but I died. And I was found dead by my wife, and I was dead for more than probably 15 minutes. Uh, now, in my mind, I was not dead. In fact, I was in a reality more real than planet Earth is to me today. 
Uh, I was standing in front of a brilliant light, didn't even know how I got there or what, really where there was, except that I knew that I was standing before God. I also knew that He had told me some things, He had shown me some things. Uh, like a giant screen had unfolded or a scroll had unrolled in front of me on which vivid depictions of a future state or maybe even a destiny was playing out in front of me. But then uh, it was gone from my mind and I couldn't remember what I had seen. And I started saying, Lord, please don't let me forget. Don't let me forget. And he had said to me, it is time for you to go back now and you will not remember what you have seen. And then suddenly I hear like a thunderclap. And I'm falling backward. Gary, you're a pilot. You'd know more about this than I do. I even <laughs> said one time it was as if Gary Stearman kicked me out of the side of his Stearman aircraft. But I'm falling down through the sky. I can see this bright light moving away from me very quickly now. Uh, many of this, you know, is, is, is actually quite similar to other people who have had near-death experiences, that kind of thing. But I'm falling down, and then the strangest thing happens. And I see the roof of my house literally envelop around me and pop right onto the bed, and I sit up on the bed, I take in this deep breath, you know, <gasps> and now I realize that I'm back in this reality. And I'm sitting there probably in shock, I'm trying to recall, you know, what in the world just happened to me, or in the other world just happened to me, when I hear weeping. And uh, I turn and I look over, and here's my beautiful young wife, Nita, and she's sitting there, she's got her hands over her eyes, and she's obviously been traumatized. She's bawling her eyes out. And make a long story short, I ask her what's going on, and she explains to me that she had woke up in the middle of the night and that I was dead. No heartbeat, no pulse, no breath, no anything. She's been beating on my chest. She doesn't really know how to do CPR. We're living out in the country. We don't, no, no such thing as cell phones back then, right? And we didn't even have a rotary dial. We had nothing. Young people watching the show would say, Mom, what is a rotary dial, right? <laughs> nothing. Uh, and uh, so I got to move through this quickly or it dominate the whole show. But from that point and forward, uh, over the next few weeks, I keep saying, I'm praying and I'm asking God, I know that you showed me something. It does not make any sense to me. Why would you show me something and then not allow me to remember it? What in the world is the point with that, right? <laughs> and, uh, but also for the first time in my life, I happened to be reading through the Bible, book by book. When I uh, came to Job, chapter 33, verses 14 through 17, and my eyes fall on these words. For the Lord speaks once, yea, twice, but man perceives it not. So there is something about the waking mind that cannot perceive what has happened in that moment. And then it further explains it in the nighttime, in deep sleep, in slumbering upon the bed. Then God opens the ears of the righteous, and He sealeth their instructions within them to withdraw man from his purpose and to hide pride from man. In the Ragnarok film I go into explaining what all of that means, which again we don't really have time for today. But in that moment, even as a baby Christian, this totally made sense to me that somehow God had sealed something within me that would be important later on. And when it became important in that moment, it would be revealed to me, and then it would make sense. But it, ha it was as if it had been imprinted on some part of my soul, some part of my mind. Now, fast forward for a few times in my life. I've gone back there, uh, and only at the appropriate times. And I could tell you a couple of examples and won't. The one that the world knows about now uh, happened in 2010. And from that point forward, we st Chris Putnam joined me, and we start writing the book, became a bestseller internationally, called Petrus Romanus. The final pope is here. It's based on the prophecy of the popes. Uh, we, we, uh, we detail exactly when Pope Benedict is going to step down. <clears throat> Why am I bringing that up now? Uh, is it, you know, to brag about being correct about something that was absolutely beyond mathematically probable? It isn't. It's because uh, in uh, 2019 it happened again. And in April, what is it with April, Gary? <laughs> in April 2019 I go to bed and I wake up and this is the most vivid and frankly most terrifying thing I have ever seen. Uh, I'm standing on the earth and I'm looking up into the heavens and I see what at first I think is a giant fiery dragon that is undulating. It's moving back and forth like this and it's racing towards the planet. Next thing I know somehow I'm up above 
the, and I can see it's not a giant dragon, but rather it's a giant rock that is spinning as it's moving through the heavens, and the way the sun is playing off the contours of that stone, it only gives it the impression that it's swimming like this, moving back and forth. Now I'm back on earth. Here's the thing, there's more detail to that, but then I wake up. And I wake up and something very curious happens. I don't know if it was in my head or if it was really audible, but I hear a single word whispered across the room to me, and that is the word apophis. Now, I, I knew really nothing about the ancient Egyptian god, but I knew that was the name of a chaos dragon, uh, the enemy of light uh, in Egyptian mythology named Apophis. From that point forward, I, start, I go into deep research. I'm into it for more than a year, but the bottom line for me was I became convinced over time that NASA is involved in a cover-up. Again, there's lots of stuff in the film, mm -hmm. lots of uh, people who were willing to talk to us, astronomers and others. I'm convinced it's coming, but more importantly, and now you guys can talk, uh, <laughs> more, more importantly, I believe that it is the fulfillment of Revelation 8. I believe it is the uh, stone known in Revelation 8 as wormwood, and. which would make that then the middle of the Great Tribulation period. You back up three and a half years earlier if you're a pre-tribulation rapture believer, and you're in the midst of the three most important ancient Jewish feasts, which all prophecy scholars have tied uh, to, the, to the rapture of the church. You know, this is a great opportunity for us to take a little break here to see how you can get our monthly magazine. Our monthly magazine has great uh, authors. We do great topics. We're talking about prophecy. We're talking about current events. And I can guarantee you that we will be giving you Psalm 19 updates, not only from our uh, equipment and what we're discovering, but as well as watching Apophis. Again, this is an amazing um, opportunity for us to keep an eye on things. So take a listen. Every day, the ancient prophecies of the Bible get more and more exciting as we watch world events come into perfect alignment with the words of the ancient prophets. Examine the pre-trib rapture doctrine taught by the Apostle Paul. Come to a deeper understanding of the giants of Genesis 6 and the real reason for the flood of Noah. Read the shocking things we see coming out of the world of science and technology, mind-blowing advances in transhumanism and artificial intelligence. Keep a close eye for a series of wars coming very soon to the Middle East. The Bible's a supernatural book, and we enjoy covering the fringe subjects and dark corners of Scripture as well. UFOs, the Nephilim, the miracles of the Bible, and so much more. It's a one-of-a-kind publication full of articles that will make you a Bible prophecy expert and prepare you for the future. We have a very special subscription offer for you today. For your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers, you can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus. Eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value. But it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that he's coming back very soon, just as he promised. Partner with us today. Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. Well, I hope you take advantage of getting our magazine because, again, it's going to keep you well informed on a monthly, uh, on a monthly basis. But, but guys, and especially Gary here, um, our foundation here is scripture. And so as we think about these things that are coming, give us some scripture. Give us some scripture that'll give us, uh, again, a foundation. Uh, Revelation 8.10 uh, talks about the third angel sounding <clears throat> and a great star falls from heaven, burning like a lamp, and it falls on a third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, We've, we need to talk about that word, by the way. And 
a third of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Two things. Number one, this is in the tribulation period. And number two, wormwood poisoning the waters. Uh, <clears throat> what a theme to visualize. And your narrative, Tom, just I, I, I hardly took a breath while you were talking. Comment on wormwood. Well, and, and here's the other thing about wormwood and the waters being poisoned. Um, is this a pandemic? Could that somehow be connected with the mark of the beast, without which no man might buy or sell, which is also being pushed by the false prophet? Even, by the way, if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh, here's this evangelical being anti-Catholic. No, some of the greatest minds in Catholicism down through time, their biggest theologians believe that the Pope, a future Pope, would either be Antichrist or would be the false prophet. Their theologians believe this, and many do believe that today. Now, there are a lot of people hearing Tom who will say, uh, this is not the age of prophecy. You can't prophesy <laughs> like that. And, but can you? And, and, and why do you? And Tom, I am compelled <clears throat> to deal with this question because I know there are a lot of people who, through fright, uh, anxiety, whatever, would deny what you're saying a priori. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, well, the fact that he had the previous, the, the previous prediction, that prophecy came true, that, that leads me to believe that it's probably a good idea to pay attention to this one, too. But one thing that's really interesting in the film we show, because a, a lot of people will get kind of hung up on the, well, how does Wormwood happen halfway in the middle tri of the tribulation? Because typically people put the first trumpet right at the middle. Well, what's interesting, and I hadn't thought about this until Tom brought this up, um, the way he saw it in his vision, this is the way this would work scientifically. You could look at the first four trumpets as mm -hmm. all a chain reaction. Mm -hmm. so, and, and it all could be this asteroid strike. So the, the, the debris that falls from the sky would come first. You have uh, something hitting the ocean, something hitting the land. So either one big asteroid breaks apart or maybe it's a binary asteroid thing. Uh, and, and so you have more words. So the whole thing could be a chain reaction, which w so it would fit just fine in the, right in the middle of the tribulation like that. Now, while we're talking here, tell me your part, the part that you played uh, in this DVD. I mean, tell yeah. people about yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, uh, I'm, I directed the movie and did most of the, actually all of the filming and interviews and everything. Um, I'm in it briefly with Dr. Ken Johnson. We talk about the Essenes uh, and that there's actually some Dead, scroll, uh, Dead Sea Scroll prophecies that seem to point to this time period too between 2025 and 2075 which is really interesting because Apophis has well that now there's more than three but at the time they had three big like flybys that Apophis was supposed to do all within that same time frame 2025 to 2075 wow. yeah so what are the chances of all these things just coming together like I gotta that? bring Mondo <laughs> into this discussion yeah. because Mondo loves astronomy he's a sky watcher yeah and uh, how, what's your uh, uh, reaction to all this well, Gary, you know, I, I do love astronomy, as you know, and uh, but we're going to do a little teaser. We'll come back to that after the break here because we want to give you an opportunity to see how you can get this, again, very good film, very well done, lots of great graphics, the film Ragnarok. Take a listen. We live in increasingly perilous times, just as the Bible predicted for the last days. People are looking for answers, waiting for things to be normal again. But perhaps we've passed that point in society. We believe we're in the final moments of history and we expect to see more and more chaos in the days ahead. God's judgment on this sinful world is long overdue. Enter Josh Peck, Tom Horn, and Derek Gilbert with one of the most astonishing future events we could ever imagine. A gigantic asteroid is hurtling towards Earth at speeds of up to 45 thousand miles an hour. It's scheduled to arrive on Friday the 13th in the month of April in the year 2029. When we read Revelation chapter 8, we see an object that strikes planet Earth and brings great destruction and death. Is this object the Bible calls Wormwood, the asteroid Apophis? Does this represent God's judgment during the seven-year tribulation? It certainly seems to fit the narrative we see in Revelation. 
Josh's new DVD, Ragnarok, is available for your gift of $25 or more to Prophecy Watchers. We'll also include a free bonus DVD from Mondo Gonzalez, The Heavens Declare the Glory of God, an introduction to biblical astronomy. You may not realize it, but God put his message of salvation in the constellations long before mankind was given the Bible. We've also taken Tom Horn's two books on the subject, The Messenger and The Wormwood Prophecy, and packaged them together in the Ragnarok package. When you order these two well-researched books for your gift of $60 or more, we'll send you the new Ragnarok DVD and include Mondo's Astronomy DVD as an extra bonus, and we'll cover the cost of shipping anywhere in the USA. Just call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv. Apophis is heading our way. It's no surprise to NASA or to Prophecy Watchers. As we get closer to that event, it's more important than ever that we warn the world of the things that are coming. Will you partner with us today and help us share the good news of God's free gift of salvation and the soon return of Jesus? So welcome back. And, and before the break, Gary was talking about really the astronomy aspect of the movie Ragnarok. I appreciate that, Gary, because um, one of the things that we're doing here, you guys know this, but for you, those of you who might not know, we have uh, been blessed with an opportunity, what we're calling uh, the Psalm 19 Project. And one of the things that we're doing is we're creating a world-class observatory because there is a lot of background to the whole Apophis um, idea going all the way back to, to December of 2004. And what I like to say often here, guys, is that uh, we're not here to defend NASA. I mean, we're not here to defend NASA. That's not our business. But we are, what we are here to do is to do our own research. And with the Psalm 19 project, we're going to have, again, have this world-class observatory with two scopes. We'll be able to track Apophis. Uh, we'll be able to get our own photographs. We'll be able to provide, uh, hopefully, uh, orbits and what they call astrometry, uh, be able to track things and where they're at, where they're located and where they're going. So, um, Gary, we have the astronomy background. And again, one of the things that's coming up is Apophis appears in 2029. It also appears in 2036, appears in the 2050s as well as 2068. So there's a variety of opportunities for Apophis to be coming, but here we are. We want to give a biblical background to what we're doing as well as some real uh, scientific investigation on our part. And Mondo, to me, that's a very important point because, you know, I've also been asked, well, how certain are you that Apophis is going to strike the earth? And, and my response to it is, look, I'm not an astronomer. All I know is what I saw. Mm -hmm. And then dur during re research, I have a friend that's actually a flight specialist that does work with NASA. Uh, he's worked in the shuttle programs and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And he came to see me at a conference. He gave me explosive stuff for the first book on this, The Wormwood Prophecy, in which he was giving me evidence of NASA being involved in covering up the details. Mm -hmm. Then he comes back to another conference where I'm at. He's like, you got to take that out of the book. He said, they came to see me. Oh, How they knew mm -hmm. I gave you that, I do not know. But he said, they told me, First of all, you're going to lose your job. You might even go to jail. You're going to lose your pension. And so they put heavy threats on him. So we took his part. Charisma that published that book are the only ones who saw what he had to say in there, and then it had to be taken out, and we were not allowed to talk about it at all. Okay, so there are reasons that this is what I believe. But here's what I love, uh, Gary and Mondo in, and, and, and Josh. In the Bible, there is a clear pattern that if people will repent, uh, you know, Nineveh is a famous example. This judgment is coming. There's no way you can escape from it unless you repent. So he's down there preaching. Well, then they repent. Sat cloth and ashes from the king all the way down to the pauper. And God delays that judgment doesn't happen until another generation later when the second time around they wouldn't listen to the prophecies. Mm -hmm. But all through the, uh, the prophecies of Joel, and Gary, you said, you know, some people all, oh, you know, this is dreaming and visions. Yeah, that too is part a prophecy. In the latter days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons, your daughters, your old men. They will dream dreams. They will see visions. So uh, I believe that as Apophis gets close and all the world is watching it and it starts becoming obvious through both amateur and you know uh, professional astronomers that this is far more likely to hit the earth than NASA has admitted. 
there's going to be, a, there could be a kind of panic. I hope what happens is that the church wakes up and that this motivates the church to become more evangelistic than ever. It could be that through prayer and repentance and preaching and evangelism that this event in 29 is averted. That, that too would match a clear biblical pattern. I'm going to give you more time for the harvest is great, the harvest is plenty, the laborers are few, and we could see a great awakening, a great revival. So that's one possibility that this will come and generate actually what could be part of another great awakening. You know, I've been looking at, at the cover of Ragnarok here, and there's a question. It says how the Wormwood prophecy connects to our modern age, and I, I put a question mark at the end of that. How does the Wormwood prophecy connect to our modern age? Has anybody out there watched what's happening in China, in mm -hmm. Russia, in Ukraine, in Europe, in the United States, and said, what can we do? I think what we can do is talk to people and say, this is getting serious. God is getting serious. God, in a book, made predictions. And how surprising would it be if some of the predictions actually became visible, if we really are living that close to the end? And that's where I am right now. And there are a lot of people out there, Tom, who need to receive Christ. Yes. And they need to be focused. And listen, a minute ago, I was listening to you. I was focused. And part of me said, can this be really true? And the other part said, I think it is. So what do you say? I say that uh, it's never been more important that Prophecy Watchers and our, of course our own Skywatch mm -hmm. television be doing everything we can do to reach the world with an important message that Jesus is coming back. And by the way, Matthew also says, then all the tribes of the earth will mourn when they shall see the sign of the coming of the Son of Man in the heavens. So this wow. too could play into humanity's last stand. Mondo, you're sitting over there. <laughs> you're going to be observing this thing. Uh, you're going to be looking through a telescope and actually seeing it. And uh, what are your thoughts? But again, the goal is not to, to promote fear by any means. There's no doubt that Jesus said that the, the Great Tribulation is going to be the worst time in the history of mankind, the history of the world. From the beginning of the creation, Jesus uses the word creation there. There's going to be nothing as bad as this that's ever existed in the history of the creation, which is amazing. But for us, the goal is to keep watching, for us to warn others and to not be scoffers, to continue to share the gospel and invite those and all of you who are watching to put your faith and trust in Jesus so that you can escape this, this coming time of judgment and tribulation on the world. So we appreciate you watching this week. And as always, keep watching because we definitely are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.